Disney Cruise, 10 Mistakes Newbies Make. Hi everybody, welcome back. This is Anne with some more of your Disney's and today we're talking 10 mistakes newbies make and what do you want to make sure you know before you cruise. Number one is online check-in. Once your cruise is paid in full and you are within the advanced booking window, you'll be able to schedule and manage onboard activities and port adventure excursions and you'll be able to coordinate through your linked reservations. The advanced booking window is determined by your castaway club membership level. For first time guests, that's 75 days prior to sale date. Silver Cast Castaway members are 90, gold 105, and concierge 120 days prior to sale date. You can check in online through your reservations or you can check in on the Navigator app. I highly recommend downloading Disney Cruise Line's Navigator app. You're going to want this Navigator app once you're on the ship and it's best to have already downloaded it and familiarized yourself with it. Some features of the app will not be available till you get on the ship like messaging members in your party but that's okay you don't need that till then anyway. So have the app downloaded and 75 days prior to your sale date, once you're paid in full, you can go onto the app and do your check-in. Your check-in process is going to include a lot of legal details, names, address, cruise contract, etc. that you can go back over at a later time. Sometimes I'll go in and see if there's information I can put in ahead of time, but once that 75 days prior to sale date hit, you can start scheduling your activities at midnight Eastern Standard Time. So you want to do that at midnight Eastern Standard Time because there are things that will sell out. Polo for brunch and dinner will often sell out and the alcohol tastings will often sell out as well. Two other important points during your online check-in is you can select your port arrival time. I typically go to this first because I like to be on the ship as soon as possible. Possible, and I will select the earliest time available. Another important point is the youth activity registration. If your children will want to go in the kids clubs on board, you need to fill out the youth activity registration page and any other information you might need to pre-book. I believe there's something with the nurseries that you'll want to check into as well. So online check-in prior to your cruise, very important. If you get there right away and some things are sold out, don't be discouraged. Keep checking as you get closer to sale date. Some people will change their minds and let reservations go. If you still are not able to get anything online or on your app, once you get on the ship, go straight to guest services. Do not pause. Do not collect $200. Do not pass go. Okay, forget it. As soon as you get on the ship, go straight to guest services and let them know what you wanted to make reservations for and they might be able to help you out. For the alcohol tastings, you can go in the day of the tasting and once in a while they have somebody that doesn't show and they'll let you in. And for port excursions, they have a port adventure desk on the ship. Some people will change their minds and not want to go on an excursion. We actually had that last time and they found somebody that was on a waiting list and so we got to not pay for the excursion, stay on the ship and the family that one of the excursion was able to get it. They had that done within like an hour. They told me it may happen, it may not, but it happened really quick and they do like to have everybody happy. So if they can take your reservation and give it to someone else, definitely ask them about if that's something you want. Number two is planning ahead. Now I know online check-in has a bunch of planning ahead included, but you also want to know what happens once you get on the ship. Now you might not. If you're somebody that really likes to be surprised and you're just looking forward to getting on the ship and seeing what happens, then don't do this plan ahead step. If you like to have an idea of what you're getting into, that's me. I really did many hours of watching videos because I wanted to know what the ship looked like, what the layout was like, what activities I really wanted to prioritize. Watching videos here on YouTube really helped me with that portion of my planning. The first cruise that I did was a three night with my son. He was 14 years old and I did quite a bit of pre-planning. I still did not know what to expect when I got on the ship. I knew that there was kids clubs and that it was important to be there that first night for icebreakers so they felt like they're part of the club, but I didn't really know exactly all the other activities that could be there and so I just spent a lot of time familiarizing myself with the ship when I could have been doing things if I had already familiarized myself. So with the second cruise I went on it was a four night with my sister and she had been on the ship before and so we just did a lot of kind of orienting ourselves to the ship before we got on and then it really just feels like home. The Wonder's my favorite ship anyway. It just seems more comfortable and like you know where to go that way. So planning ahead can be very important if you're that type of person. Number three, get there a day early. I cannot stress how important it is to get there a day early. Even if you live three or four hours from the port, 
I still would get there the day early. You could leave at 6 a.m. and say you'll get to the port by 9 a.m. and you're not even gonna get on the ship till noon. But what can happen is weather can happen, an accident can happen, and you're stuck an hour and a half from the port and they leave without you. Obviously, that's a worst case scenario, but who wants that scenario on their cruise? A Disney cruise is a fantastic luxury experience. It is well worth the extra cost for the hotel to make sure you're there to board the ship. I also highly recommend getting a hotel within five miles of the port if at all possible. Just get there the night before and save yourself any stress. It's so wonderful to wake up and see the ship in port and go get on it right away. And on the flip side of that, you also want to make sure you do not book a flight returning home too early. Usually they want everybody off the ship by about 9 a.m. But if there's fog like can happen in Galveston, you could be on the ship for a few extra hours and you're going to miss your flight if that's the case. If there's a little hang up in customs and it takes you a little longer to get through, that could make you miss an early flight. So it's really just a great idea to schedule your flight for the afternoon. That way you just have lunch at the airport, catch up on your emails, whatever it is. It's just so much more calm than having to rush at the end of such a wonderful vacation. Number four, bring cash for tips. They have a gratuity section that you can prepay before you get on the ship or you can pay it at the end either way. I think it's $13 per person per day. That includes your room host and the three servers at dinner. You'll have your main server, drink server, and the head waiter and they all get different proportions out of that recommended $13 per person per day. You can prepay those or you can do it at the end of your trip. I like to go ahead and prepay it just so that's one more thing that I don't have to think of while I'm on vacation. The reason you want to bring cash is because 24 hour room service is included with the cost of your cruise. Most people recommend a one or two dollar tip per item so it's good to have cash for that. It's also good to have cash for when you go in the ports. A lot of them will take cards but sometimes they don't and it takes them a little while to find a machine to do the card so it's really nice to just have cash on hand to take care of that. Number five is over planning. You cannot do it all. I'll say that again, you cannot do it all. I don't care if you have a seven night cruise. Maybe if you're doing a Panama Canal 14 night cruise you might be able to fit everything in. But honestly, it's unlikely because they add in more activities for those longer cruises. There's just so much fun to be had. The app will have your daily activities on there. There are so many different things going on in the ship. There's things for families like animation drawings or family game shows, scavenger hunts. There's a mini golf on the top deck of the fantasy and the dream. There's sports simulators. Those are an extra cost, by the way. There's just so many things to do on the ship. And then for the adults there's cooking demonstrations that come with a little tasting there's the other alcohol tastings where you get a full hour of education on multiple drinks there's a lot of music trivia which is a lot of fun three things that I really love to do on the ship that I do try to fit into my plan is the diaper dash that's where they race babies from I think zero to nine months in the atrium or the grand hall depending on which ship you're on it's just a lot of fun it sounds kind of bad, I guess, racing babies, but it's really a lot of fun to watch them. And, and they just have so much fun, the families trying to get those <laughs> babies over to cross that line. It's fun to see the babies just stop and play and be babies. We also really love the mixology classes. We do those every time we cruise. And Match Your Mate. Match Your Mate is a game show. They'll bring up three couples, newlyweds, someone kind of in the middle range of like, you know, seven to 10 years married, and then longer, like 20 plus years married. This is really similar to a, a game show that used to be on TV. They'll bring the women up on stage. They'll take the men and seclude them while the women answer questions. And they say, how would your husband answer this question? And then they do the same things with the ladies for the men. And then they bring everybody back and answer the questions. And it's extremely funny, especially when you have family members in the audience that maybe don't want to hear those answers. It's a lot of fun. And the cruise host is always so funny. I highly recommend checking out their adult activities. They have amazing Broadway caliber shows in their theater every night. And you can watch those on the screen in your room if it's coming in. That can be a little dicey sometimes. I've actually heard that they have afternoon showings of the stage shows now sometimes. So you might want to check into that. But really just enjoy your cruise. There's always going to be more to do. I haven't really met anybody yet that did a Disney cruise and didn't want to do another one. So don't worry if you didn't make it to it your first time, you got another one coming up. Okay, number six, your DC app is an absolute gold mine. Everything is in there. It has your reservations before you go cruise. You can show your payments in there. You can make payments. You can check sure you have early or late dining. I recommend early dining for families with kids, late dining for adults. Late dining for adults is more my preference. 
You can check on your port excursions there, what character meet and greets are at what times, where they're going to be located, what activities are going on. You can set reminders so that your app will remind you, hey, you wanted to go to this activity today, do you still want to go? Or it's your alcohol tasting. You definitely want to make it to that. So go get some food and go enjoy your tasting. Your Navigator app also enables you to communicate with other members of your party, kind of like a text function. And if you have any questions about this when you get on the ship, they've got an internet desk there. Just go there and let them help you out. I always do that because I get a little confused. The one thing I do know is to keep it on airplane mode so that I'm not using any Wi-Fi. Okay, number seven, family tables tip. With Disney Cruise Line, you do what is called rotational dining. They will seat you with similar groups. The first time I went, it was me and my 14-year-old son. At our table, they sat us with two other single moms with their teenage sons. So that was a lot of fun for our first cruise. For our second cruise, we really just wanted to have a table to ourselves. So we requested that and we did get our own table. We actually did the same thing for our third and fourth cruises and we got our own table. Obviously that's not a guarantee, but if that's something you want, then be sure to ask. And just be aware that you are going to have potentially other families at your table. This can be a lot of fun for making new friends or if you just like to have your own company make the request for your own table. The rotational dining that I threw in there, they have three main dining restaurants on the Disney cruise ship and your waiters will travel with you to those restaurants every night. So while you're changing restaurants, restaurants, you will have the same waiters that are learning your likes and preferences, as well as any allergies or dietary needs. So that's really nice to have. Number eight is room packages. One of my favorite souvenirs was actually a room package. It's a romance package. I believe it's $135 for two people, and that include two really soft robes with the Disney Cruise Line logo. There'll be a bottle of Prosecco in your room with two glasses. There'll be a box of chocolates and a rose. And it's really nice to walk into the stateroom and see that all laid out for you. They also have room packages for children, for birthdays, and for holidays. I highly recommend checking the room packages if you have a Maritime Cruise or a Halloween on the High Seas Cruise. They typically have a theme-specific blanket that can be purchased, and sometimes those can disappear. So I would check about a month before you're sailing and see if those are on there. They also have standard packages for your birthday with some room decorations, and that can just be a lot of fun as well. Number nine, you can carry on beer and wine. Each adult, 21 and over, can carry on two bottles of wine or six bottles of beer per person per port. So the important distinctions, obviously you gotta be over 21, but you can do this at every port. So that can kind of help your alcohol bill if you're picking up beer in every port. It does have to be carried on. So that first day, don't put it in your checked luggage. It's gotta be carried on. So it's two bottles of wine or six bottles of beer per person per port. Number 10, getting sick. You absolutely do not want to get sick on your Disney cruise. We did go through a really rough storm one night and probably a third of the ship was in their room not feeling well. The dining room was pretty empty and so were the clubs that evening actually. We have a fourfold attack. <laughs> we have a fourfold plan that we use to really make sure we're feeling our best. I'll usually start with a boning two days before the cruise sets sail. You take that every night. You'll also want to get some C-bands. These are little acupuncture type wristbands that you can put on your wrists. If I start to feel any type of movement, I immediately put those on because I want to make sure I continue to feel good. So between the boning and the C-bands, I'm usually covered. Once in a while, I'll take an extra boning if it's a really rough night and I want to be able to make sure I'm still feeling well. I also bring lemon or ginger drops and I found a four in one kind of hard candy type thing that is for nausea, upset stomachs, and two other things I can't think of, but they have B12 in them. They're really good. So maybe look for something like that as well if you're really worried about it. The other thing that I've heard that can be helpful on the ship is ginger ale and green apples. So that's something to really consider. If you think you're any type of seasick, check into that. We did know some people that tried these patches. They said those actually made them feel worse. So I can't, I can't speak to that. We just make sure we have the boning, the C-bands, and some type of immediate backup that we could take as well. We have a bonus for you because it's so important. Number 11 is overpacking. Rule of thumb is to make a list so you know what you need. Pack everything, lay it all out on your bed, and then cut it in half. I know a lot of people probably aren't going to cut it in half, but at least try and cut it down by a third. 
Sometimes you do want a couple of change of clothes because of meeting with princess characters. If you want to dress nice for dinner, going to the pool, some more comfortable leggings for going to the movie. So it's just important to to look into that. You don't want to be overpacked. Also, if you can, when you're packing to leave, leave a little room in your suitcase. That helps when you have to pack up to go home. You have all those souvenirs and things just don't seem to fit in the same. It's helpful if you have a little extra room. Okay, I have three pro tips for you. I really wish we had known this when we went on our first cruise. Number one, get an ornament. The ornaments are probably 10 to $20. I think they're more like eight to 15. I can't remember exactly, but they're a great thing to have on your tree. You can relive memories from your trip every year. I really wish we had done that. On our last trip, we got a dated ornament from the ship and then we also got a couple from the islands that we visited. I just love having the ornaments, a really delightfully affordable souvenir for me. Another pro tip, there are charms that you can get from each port. On the ship they will have port shopping talks. When you go to those talks, first of all, they give away some free things. Second of all, they will give away either the charm on the ship or they'll give you a little certificate to pick up a charm once you're on shore. These are just little charms like a seahorse, a sea turtle, a palm tree, but you can get these from every single port and they're free. Obviously, they're gonna try to sell you in the jewelry shop. That was no problem for me. I don't buy jewelry. So I just went in and got my little free charm and went to look at spices. And one of my favorite suggestions, if you are going adults only, or if you're going over to Serenity Bay while you're on Castaway Key, that lunch is the best. They typically have ribeyes there, which are so good. Sometimes they'll have fish there, not always, but sometimes. And sometimes the bar over there will be two for one cocktails later in the afternoon. Okay, so that's it. That's your 11 mistakes that you don't wanna make and a few pro tips just for fun. If you like these videos, please subscribe and ring that little bell so you'll know when we put the next one out. Thanks for joining us and we'll see you real soon with some more Disney.